Now, it was first used way back uh, around 40 AD. Uh, torpedo fish were used for relieving headaches and things because they're electric fish, electric eels. And then it kind of <laughs> disappeared from uh, use until about 1855 when they started tinkering again with electricity. And this is a guy here doing some work, some kind. And here's another gentleman doing more work, some kind again. And then in about 1950s, with more modern electronics and the stuff that was a little safer, uh, it came out again and, um, and has been in use ever since. Uh, basically, a small stimuli, typically we use one milliamp, and, we, and you have to tune it to your electrodes. Uh, that's the other thing as well. Uh, it affects pyramidal cells and likely astrocytes, which modulate neuronal activity. The anode has been shown, which is your positive, increases cortical function from 20 to 40 percent. The cathode inhibits from about 10 to 30. And the, day, and the effect lasts for a few days. But it can build, especially if you do a cognitive function relating to uh, the area of the brain you just stimulated. And so I recommend people use this with a Broadman area chart. There's two theories. One is most of our neurons are sitting at about 65 millivolts in their, in their polarized state. And if we can nudge that down by 5 to 10 millivolts, because the average neuron is innervated by about 5,000 dendrites, you can really jump the excitability, even though you, you re reduce the um, resting potential just slightly. And, and you also put them further into hyperpolarizing with the, uh, with the negative electrode. And the other theory is the anode reduces GABA activity at the synapse. Of course, GABA has a calming effect. And the cathode reduces glutamate at the synapse. And glutamate has an excitatory effect, so you take that out of the picture so that it calms it down. And uh, those are the two theories. A lot of the research has been done by Niche and his group at the University of Göttingen. Um, and there's about 75 or 80 studies on it uh, to date. Other guys now, Fregni, Paulus, Antel, these guys, Pascal Leon, uh, they've lectured at our conferences before out of Harvard, out of the, neuro, uh, the neurophysiology department there, uh, are doing more work on this now. Here's a number of the studies. Almost the, all the studies are almost always double blind or ABA type studies, uh, where they switch the anode and cath it around and see what happens. And you can see there's quite a bit of it. There's about 75 or so studies to date. Um, so far, it seems fairly safe for the most part. You do have to tune it a bit. Whoops. Oh, yeah. One of the things that you always use the same size electrodes all the time. <coughs> and, uh, and they would often put the, uh, the, the, um, the, um, the reference electrode on the contralateral orbit for no good reason that I could think of. And they were always screening, of course, what the active was doing never realizing if they were inducing attention deficit disorder in people or not. Uh, but I don't think it was a very good system. Eventually, though, a niche uh, found that, hey, you know, if we have a much larger reference, we can keep that current density really, really low. Because it's not so much the amount of current that's going to your electrode, it's how is that amperage spread out. Amperage and current, that's what I mean by current, I mean amperage. How is it spread out through your electrode? And he found if you have a much larger electrode, you could keep that current density way low, and it wouldn't have an excitatory or an inhibitory effect if you put it on the head. I personally use shoulder pretty much always for the other electrode, because then you get out of the picture entirely. Um, um, anyway, they determined that 17 microvolts per square centimeter was that threshold limit. Uh, other studies, especially on depression or studies involving temporal or frontal lobes, suggest you need more like 40 microamps per square centimeter. I know most of you work in inches, so take 2.54 times 2.54, and whatever that number is, multiply it by that 17, and, and you'll get what it is in inches. Um, uh, the stuff that we have here, we've tuned this electrode. It's 1 and 7 eighths square inches. Where did I put it? Oh, here it fell out. Uh, square, roughly. And at one milliamp, it works out to be about 55 microamps per square centimeter. The reference one works out to be about 20. And again, usually I use the shoulder and I get one of those little, little bean bags you can put in the microwave and you can make them hot. 
put a bean bag on the shoulder for a little extra weight. Uh, the gear is designed automatically to shut off if ever there is an open circuit or a short circuit because it has to deliver a milliamp. It's a current source system and so it, it, it knows automatically if there's an electrode problem and shuts itself down. And the sessions are always 20 minutes, which is almost all the research ever done is based on 20 minutes. Um, here's an example of current density though. If you had a five by five uh, centimeter electrode, which is 25 square centimeters, you have one milliamp through it, you'd have 40 microamps per square centimeter, just one milliamp divided by 25, right? Does that make sense? Right, so anyway, and if you had different sizes, you'd have different outcomes with different currents flowing through them. Um, so that's, that's how it's done. And here's the calculations on the stuff that, that I currently have designed for. Here's an example of, a, of, a, of a, a lady who had attempted suicide twice in two months before coming to our office. <coughs> and this is a brain map using uh, the MITSAR and the, uh, the skill database. And what we're seeing here, she was completely unreasonable. I couldn't reason with her about anything. If I said your life could get better, it was like, screw you, my life's not getting better. It never will. Um, or if I say, I think we can help, screw you can't help, nobody else can help. Anyway, you can see part of the reason why she has a reasoning issue. Look at all these hot spots. This is set to 3.3 .3 standard deviation, so she's probably pushing over three and a half to make them pink like that. She's reasoning, first of all, she has really slowed alpha, so you don't, you don't reason well if your alpha is slowed. Secondly, it's all a negative. It's all from what's going to go wrong perspective, right? It's all on a depressed side. A great deal of anxiety is going along with it. Uh, after one session, some nice things happened. See, I'm on a 3.3 .3 scale here, and I'm at a 2.6 scale, and that slowed alpha is now gone. And that's one session with an anode on, on, on the left side. She still has a depression, but she's getting more reasonable. Put it to you that way. And I wasn't too, cons I mean, there was a lot of anxiety here, but I was really trying to work with her so I could talk to her and, uh, and give her basically what I would call life skills coaching. And then after 10 sessions, now notice I'm at 2.6 here, now I'm at 2.5. After 10 sessions, she still has this alpha distribution, but it's almost symmetrical between left and right. And her depression is, is darn near gone at this point. And she's getting pretty easy to talk to now and reason with and deal with her anger issues and things like that that's going on. Uh, despite this anxiety stuff showing up though, her anxiety symptomatically seemed to be falling. Uh, 